Hi, everyone. Good morning, good evening, uh, good day, depending on where you are around the world. Uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, for this uh, virus presentation. Uh, I've got with me uh, our host and also the channel manager uh, for virus, uh, Katerina. And, um, you know, she's based uh, in Europe, specifically in Spain. So it's uh, quite early in the morning for them. And, um, uh, you know, I want to thank her, uh, you know, for, for joining and, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, giving, her, uh, giving her time to take us through basically uh, all the, the, the virus solutions that we're going to see in the next half an hour or so. So, Katerina, I think I'll stop talking and uh, pass it on to you so that um, you can commence the presentation, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karshik. Thank you for this lovely presentation. And thank you all for, for joining today's, um, today's webinar. Um, well, we'll be talking about, you know, STEM content creation. Um, I would like this webinar also to be like both directional. So maybe you could share with me your, your pain points, your experience. And I could explain to you like what kind of tools virus has to um, to embrace uh, these challenges that you may face when you have to create STEM content, right? So um, I will be sharing my screen, and we will start with our presentation. So we're here today, uh, both Wiris and Heron Software um, presenting a webinar on STEM, com STEM content uh, with math type and Wiris quizzes. So, um, you know, my idea not to take a lot of your time, um, just to, you know, do a high level webinar of what is Wiris, what kind of tools do we have, and what exactly, you know, the, the problems that we solve uh, with these tools and to see if if those are helpful for you, uh, what kind of solutions you have at the moment. Maybe you don't have none and you have, you know, some problems that you are facing with the content creation. So I would like to, you know, to to see all of this, all of the subjects today. So our agenda would be um, I will explain a little bit about Wiris. For those of you who don't know us, what is the company, where we come from, where we're heading to. Um, I will explain the key segments and, you know, present some of our partners so you can see, like, um, who are our customers and maybe you know them, maybe you have, you know, some colleagues working in this, in these companies and institutions. And then we will pass to Virus Portfolio. So we'll speak of, uh, of our products, of our main products. Um, that we suggest to to STEM creators, and here you see like a little bit of a spoiler. <laughs> so the products will be math type and virus quizzes, and we will do you know a brief description and a brief demo of both of them. And once once everything's done, everything's explained, we will leave like some time, like five ten minutes to a Q and A session, right? So let's start with um, with a little bit of uh, of our own uh, history. Like, who are these people from Wiris? Where is Wiris? Where do we come from? Um, so Wiris um, is actually a pioneering software development company. Um, this July, um, we were turning 25 years. So actually, we have we have a, a birthday party this um, this afternoon in in the office. So we're more like 25 years and a little bit more on the market for uh, STEM content creation. And uh, as Kaushik mentioned, we're we're based in Barcelona in Spain. It's our main office. And we also have um, another office in Long Beach in California. So we're currently more than 90 people, both in Europe and in the US. And um, we still keep growing. So um, we're also working on, you know, launching other products. So our product team is, is growing. So we have uh, a lot of vision for, for the future of of STEM content. 
So maybe, uh, I mean, maybe probably some of your colleagues who are working with STEM already heard about us because of our integration with LMS and also with Microsoft Office, with Google Workspace. So if you or your colleagues had to do something with math, with science, with technology, like probably you heard somebody something about about Wiris or our product. So what are the key segments for for us? Who are our our main partners? So we have like um, two big sectors, two big segments of the people who are using our tools. Those are academic and corporate. So when we're talking about academic, it's actually um, almost every level of of the learning path um, where various tools can be used. So it can be schools, high schools, um, colleges, universities, and we we're going up and up and we are coming to ministries of education that in some countries are our, our, our partners and you know facilitating the, the tools for the STEM, STEM content creation for for those countries like on the government level and on another another side we have a corporate sector well there's a lot of uh you know partners a wide range of partners that we have in this sector also um so the company started like more academic focused but now we'll see like we actually have a more corporate partners that are publishers um, people who who provide online assessment and tech companies, um, government agencies, learning management system themselves that our partners, and so on. So if we are passing like to show you some of our some of the examples of our of our partners, um, I personally myself I don't like very much the word client. Because you know it's uh, there. I don't know. I don't like this word. I like word partners. We're partners, and we're also exchanging ideas. So um, not only they are using our tools, but also we are learning from them. We're learning from the community to see what their need, what is their you know pain points, uh, what experience they have with our tools. So it's more of a partners. Okay. So here, for example, in uh, learning management system, when we are certified Moodle partner, we're also partners with Canvas, with Blackboard, and D2L Bright, Brightspace. For the academics, well, like some examples for you to, to, to give. Um, we are partners with Yale University, with Harvard, with Oxford. Um, in Australia, there's the University of Melbourne, University of Canterbury, um, and, you know, wide range of, of academic customers that we have at the moment. Um, moreover, over uh, the pandemics, when, you know, this change to digital learning is like we're, we're facing it more and more. So there's a more... Um, there's more people looking for this kind of tools in the academic sphere. So when we pass to, to a corporate sector and we're talking about publishers, one of the biggest publishers in the world are also our partners like Sanama, like McGraw-Hill or Pearson. And if we go to corporate and government, well, here we can give an example of uh, Queensland Curriculum and Assessment Authority in Australia, um, Standards Australia that are also our partners. And we also partners with NASA. Can you imagine? So we are going like right to the space with our tools and NASA actually are using um, our editor to uh, within within their investigation um, departments. So if we pass to virus portfolio, well, we actually have uh, now in our portfolio two products. So as you can see, we're we're a company that is quite niche. So we have a two products um, that you can see here, the interfaces that is um, MATTYPE and virus quizzes. So MATTYPE, as you can see, it's basically uh, a visual math editor. 
So it's a, sort of a plugin that you can use basically in every environment where you need to write STEM content digitally. And Wireless Quiz as well, it's an assessment tool. So it's a plugin to learning management system where you can, you know, provide assessments, uh, create exams, and work both uh, teacher or content creator with the students that need to that need to do this assessment. So let's go one by one with our products, and I will explain you a little bit um, a little bit on their features and uh, how these products can be of, of a good use for you. So when we're going to to Matt Dive, to Matt Editor, um, you know the main idea of this Matt, of, of this editor of this tool is to be as user friendly as as it possible. You know to be as as easy as you can get to to write math and chemistry formula within the within the digital environment. So. Some of the features are, you know, it's twice a week editor. It means that you can see immediately the math you write, and we can, in in a bit, we will see it in a demo. It adapts to your needs, so you can change the toolbar. You can change the the um, let's say the the vision of the of the editor. Um, you can also use it with MathML and LaTeX. It's compatible with MathMath and LaTeX. Um, you can use it both for math formulas and chemistry formulas. It's auto-formatting. Uh, you have an editing control. There's a full range of mathematics symbols, uh, a lot of fonts, wide range of fonts coverage. The thing is that it's important for publishers, for example, when we need to insert um, a certain formula into our content and to have the same font, uh, to have the same style as the rest of the text. So you can achieve it actually with the with the math type. So the math type, as I was as I was mentioning, um, can be actually used and integrated. Well, basically, in I think in in every environment that you can think of where you can write. Um, this kind of content. So we can be part of uh, Microsoft Office. You can use it in Google Workspace. You can use it in uh, online platforms, learning management systems. And uh, it also can be integrated into um, HTML editors. So Rolla, Tiny, Sika, um, you name it. We, we can be integrated there. And also, if you have like your own development, we have you know a lot of partners that um, develop in their own systems, their own um, environment. So we can do also a custom integration. So it's the very very easy uh, tool from the admin admin point of view. You know, there's there's not a lot of problem. It's just installing and you know starting to use it. So let's go to, to the math type demo. And see how it works. So here you can see the interface of the editor. You see the toolbar, different, you know, different signs that you can use. Here's the formula that you can write. And also, here's the important thing that we have um, a handwriting uh recognition tool so not only you can use a toolbar in your keep uh, keyboard but also you can use um handwriting recognition tool that's really really great if you're using like i don't know um tablets or even mobile phones and you need to write a formula so hey let's try to do this let's try to write the formula and we see that the editor recognizes it and moreover it changes it to a good looking formula that then can be exported to to the content that you're creating. So some of the features of this editor to mention, you know, the toolbar can be totally customized. Here you can see the simple toolbar. Here you can see the toolbar. 
that you can use for for little children. Hey, kids are only starting with math, so let's do it like with colors and everything. It's totally, totally, totally doable. Um, you can have also a publisher toolbox. Maybe for some of you, it's interesting to know that apart from all the mathematical science that you can use, here's also a publisher toolbar, a simple version of it. So here you can see where the formula can be inserted within the text, um, the fonts, the the ranges, the you know everything that a publisher needs to to write a digital formula and then to export it to the content. So there are a lot of uh, formats where um, of a lot of formats in which the formula can be exported. So we were talking about PNG, SFG, PDF, GPAC, and and more and more of them. Um, the editor is also compatible with Mathemat and LaTeX. So uh, as I was mentioning, if you, um, for some reason, you're still writing formulas in Mathemat or in LaTeX, let's say, let's see what happens if we change this formula in LaTeX and see that our editor is actually does actually understand this formula and changes it to, you know, to a good looking formula, let's say. <laughs> And then you can export this formula to the content. So, hey, if you still want to use, if you don't want to use the toolbar, you want to um, continue with LaTeX and MathML for your, for your content. Still, it's compatible with our editor and you can write a formula with this. And I think one of the most important features of MathType, it's an accessibility feature. So um, I don't know if you if you guys know about it, but you know the programs that the people with vision disabilities use to rock, to read the screen. Um, normally, these products, uh, when they see a formula inserted in the text, they cannot actually um, they cannot uh, understand the formula. They cannot read the formula. So once they get to this formula, they just say image because it's an image for them. It's not a formula. So with map type, formula created with map type is actually understood by these programs and is read by these programs. So if you insert in your content a formula created with map type, then this kind of programs that read in the screen can actually understand the formula and read it to you. So read to, to, to the person that, that is using this kind of um this kind of programs right so i think it's very very cool it's very important um feature that we can you know suggest to to our partners and um that's basically it about the map type so it's very very user friendly it's very easy to use and it's not much of a of a, of a mystery here <laughs> let's say um so from here, we will be passing to uh, virus quizzes. Now, the virus quizzes, it's a bit of a more complex uh, tool. So uh, it's an assessment tool. And as I was saying, it's um, it's basically an integration for, uh, let's, let's say, some sort of plugin for a learning management system. So we have uh, integration with Moodle, with Canvas, with Blackboard, and also um, compatible with uh, LTI integrations. Um, so what is what is so interesting about virus quizzes? What uh, what you know problems solves this this um, this tool? So um, you know one of the most important things is that you can create open questions with virus quizzes. Why is that important? Well, normally now um, in the digital assessment uh, sector and sphere or the academics who need to create digital exams um, for their students, for example, normally this kind of things is like multiple uh, choices answer and, and we only have that. So we suggest to to our student or to those people who can who needs to pass these kind of exams, like some sort of question, and then 
answers. One, two, three. Choose the one that you like. So we say, hey, you cannot actually learn math that way. Because I remember when I was a kid, um, obviously we didn't have these these kind of tools, but I remember that our teacher was a, was always, always asking, like, you need to explain to me how you get that answer. So with virus quizzes, it is actually possible. So it's possible to do open questions, what it means. You don't have to, to choose from one, two, three. No, you need to present me your, your, um, your answer. And if I want to see the logic, you can also do it within this tool. So not only formulas, but also graphical and statistical questions are also covered with quizzes. We have an auto evaluation system within virus quizzes. So we're saving you our time where you, when you need to grade um, the exams and when you need to give a feedback. Um, we also have a great visual graph uh, representation both in 2D and 3D. And what is very, very important for, for teachers or for those who create an exam for content creators, we prevent cheating. In the demo, we'll see how we can do that. Um, so that's from the point of view more of a teacher. From the point of view of a student or a person who needs to, to do this exam, well, open answer is also an important feature because maybe I don't, I don't give the same answer that um, the teacher is waiting for me. But we know that in math, you know, x plus 2 and 2 plus x are the same things. So if it's not the one, it's another, and it's also the right answer. So we give this opportunity with virus quizzes to um, to our students, you know, to just to uh, use their knowledge to to answer this this kind of exams. We also provide our students uh, real time and tailored feedback right within the tool, right after their uh, they they answer the specific question. With random parameters with a specific feature that we have in virus quizzes, we can provide practice on the same topic the number of times that we want. We will see it in the demo right away. And obviously, we also have a handwriting feature. So we have a handwriting feature both for creation of uh, exams, of quizzes, and the same one can be used by students when answering them. So that's from the point of vision of the student. And hey, we're we are, we are uh, forgetting about a very, very important person here that is actually um, our IT admin or, you know, this person that needs to do the integration. You're, go you're going to them and say, hey, I want virus quizzes within my LMS or within my uh, web page or whatever. And they say, oh, my God, I need to, you know, spend like, a, no, I don't know how many hours within it, it will be super difficult. Well, none of that, because the, the integration is super easy. We have um, out of the box integrations with the biggest LMS, and we also can provide you support with integration if you have your own um, development. So we support with uh, LTI and API integration, uh, and we also obviously provide every documentation, technical documentation that you need. Um, we provide support uh, and we also do trainings for teachers on content creators who will work on virus quizzes. So we do trainings totally free of charge for you to understand better the tool. OK, so without other ado, let's jump to a demo. Here we go. So let's see what some of, some of the features of this tool. Um, so uh, I was mentioning the open questions. So basically, you understand uh, the logic that um, that is behind this this feature. For example, here we have this question, and we have different types of answers from the correct answer said by the teacher, and the student's answer is different. But hey. That's a different, that's, that's the same thing basically, so they're equal. So our tool actually understands it. We call it a math engine. <laughs> so it's like someone, it's like a teacher that understands like, okay, it's not something that I was expecting, but it's still a correct answer. 
So these kind of open questions, open answers can be done um, within virus quizzes. So you can also, as an instructor, again, select rules for evaluation uh, if you want to simplify the fraction. So there's a simplification rules. There's also unit rules, for example, if you need um, a question with units. Um, there's another feature that I wanted to stop by here a bit that is called dynamic questions with random values. So basically with this, um, with this feature, we help prevent cheating by allowing you to use random parameters in questions. And we create dynamic questions. What does it mean? Let's try it out. So we see here that uh, on the student view, there's a question that we need to add the fraction and simplify the result. OK, here we see the part where the student will answer it. So we'll see the same toolbar as the math type. As you can see, math type is within virus quizzes. And we see the handwriting part so the student can also can also use the hand, uh, handwriting to answer. But if we go to the teacher or the authoring part, we see like there's some random values here. So it's not the numbers that we see on student view. So what happens? If we go here, we see the studio part when we actually can create not, a, not only the precise question, but only a question with random values. So we have these val var variables A, B, and C, and we set a range. So let's just change it. Let's just say it that way. OK. And we will say, save it. So in the student view, we see that the number has changed. And also, when we do, when we give this refresh, well, so we see that it's the same question, but we see that the numbers are changing. So with this feature, you can create only one question with random variables and the the same program will generate for you i don't know 50 different questions 30 different questions different meaning that uh every student will have their own uh result why because the numbers are different so with this we prevent cheating everyone has their own result with this we can also do practices not only exam practices i don't know we're we're doing simplification rules. Hey, I will generate you 20 questions. That's the same question, but hey, go and simplify the result 20, 20 times because it's the, the numbers are different, right? So it's a very, very cool uh, feature, I think, um, with the random values that, you know, it's saving your time, basically. It's saving your time, and uh, you also have this control over the over the students. Um, the answers, right? Wow, here we are coming to something different that is graphical questions and graphical answers. Hey, okay. see, that's moving. So let's try it out also. Let's try it out. And we see that we have a question from our teacher that is previously setting here. So in the same studio that we, that we were seeing, we can set the parameters of this graphical, uh, of this question, of the correct answer, of the validation rules. Everything is set within the authoring part. Now, in the student part, we see the question. So we see the text, draw the bisector, and we see the panel where uh, our student needs to answer this. Well, let's try it out. I'm not that good at it. So the idea here is to put an incorrect answer that probably I will do so and validate it. Well, obviously the system says it's not correct and <laughs> try again. So here with this example, we see that the system is automatically grading our answer and says it's not correct. But what happens here? So here in this part, we see another feature of virus quizzes that is a feedback that can be tailored by our teacher or our quizzes creator. So apart from saying like, it's not correct, you know, all the digital tools, it says not correct, mm, try again. 
So our student maybe doesn't understand like what's happening here, what's the problem. So we give a feedback of how they need to, to go or how they need to answer um, to get a correct answer, actually. So we're not only doing quizzes or exams, we continue teaching them, actually. And here we see that there's an image, right? Well, not quite right. It can be an image, but it also can be a video, like here. Hey, step by step to put in the circles to have this bisector. Wow. Because maybe at some point they were going right, but at some point they did, you know, our student did something that, um, that um, you know, got to a wrong answer. So with this step-by-step -step feedback, we can show them like, hey, mm, you need to have, you need to do this or that. So they also understand, oh, why I, I, I answered, the answer is wrong. It's because of, you know, in the middle of something, I did something wrong, right? Um, so same here in this, in this graph, like fill the region, right? It also can be done. Now, I will show you the, 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 let's say the, the easy examples, but it's, it's for advanced math also. It can be used in the university level. It's for high math. I'm not going to dig in there right there because I'm not good at math. <laughs> but you can see like it's it can be used um, for for every level basically of of uh, of math and and statistical questions and geometry questions. We have a, we have still uh, fill in the blank questions. So if you want to do it, for example, in this graphic, like fill in where the x at each moment of the graphic where the function is so it can be done within the uh, within this tool that's the statistical questions so here we see the statistical like this one this circle for example for i don't know for primary schools and this kind of things um and last but not least we had a handwriting part for formulas right but what happens with graphics so we also have a sketch um for the for the graphics right so um we it's for the it's for the answer of our students so if we were asking you to to draw some sort of graphic or for example this this circle or or whatever or draw a line depending on the x and y so our student can actually use both handwriting for formulas and sort of handwriting that is a sketch for graphics so if the tablets are used if mobile phones are used to answer these kind of things um yeah it can be do it can be done within within virus quizzes right and um that would be you know high level features of these of this tool as i was saying it's available on the most well known LMS system, we're working now on the same tool for Google Classroom. It's in a better version. But if you want to try it, it's it's totally uh it's totally free to try if you're interested. Um it will be launching soon. Um and and yeah. So from my part, I think that would be it you know, high level explaining you a little bit what we suggest for STEM creation, what are, you know, what the, um, what the pain points that we see with our partners, what are the challenges that they face that probably you are facing too, where our tools can be of some use for you. And uh, obviously, if you want to need more, we can we can do uh, like a more detailed session uh, with each one of you. And um, we'll be reserving some time for Q and A. So if you have um, like any questions, um, any things that you want to share, maybe with uh, with us. Um, you know, share your experience. Like maybe you're using something else. I would be happy to to know it um so yeah free feel free to ask feel free to share it's a safe space and thank you very much okay. thank you katarina that that was um very 
I mean, they're such useful tools, isn't it, really for both, you know, students and for teachers and corporations that are that are trying to digitize everything nowadays, you know. Um, we find just from our experience of uh, selling and servicing in the Asia, Australian market, specifically a New Zealand market, that um, people have just good things to say about them. So thank you for giving us a, a, an overview. That was really useful. Thank you. And uh, in terms of questions, um, you know, feel free to ask if there's some, if people are shy asking, you know, in a, in a group environment, uh, everyone's got my email. Uh, so please kindly, you know, you can shoot the uh, question through via an email and we can take it offline as well. There, there is this meeting uh, has, uh, is also being recorded as well. And um, I am going to send that around uh, for those that are interested. So if you want the recording, please let me know and um, I will share a link with that as well. And, and just on that note as well, I think that um, we'll endeavor to do more regular webinars, uh, especially for our Australian and New Zealand audience as well, uh, going forward to talk about specific, uh, you know, tools that uh, Katerina was um, demonstrating, and we can focus more and more on those specific tools just so that um, we go a bit more in depth uh, in subsequent webinars. Exactly, exactly. I mean, the idea is that it also interesting from your part, um, if you don't want to share right now, like maybe you can share it in an email, like what would you like to see in, in another webinar or what is, uh, I don't know, some some details that you wanted to, you know, to to see like some some specific environment, how it works in Moodle, I don't know, or, or whatever. So it gives us also, um, you know, some ideas for the for the future events and and yeah fantastic yeah absolutely please please provide that feedback it'll help us uh, refine future webinars as well so um are there any questions if not what we can do is we can wrap it up and um i can you can communicate with me via email and vice versa as well okay i think that <laughs> you, I mean, that that's okay. That's okay. We can share, you know, everything like one, one, one to one. So, yes. um, so I wanted to thank you um, for for assisting today's webinar. It's very important uh, for me and for both for Waris and Heron for that you're that you're being here. Um, it's very important for us to share, you know, uh, our. Thank you. Thank you, Rowan. It's also it's it's it's, uh, it's very important for us to share, you know, what we can. First of all, what we can suggest to to this kind of, you know, content creators for the corporate sector and, you know, how we can be useful, how, to, how our tools can be useful, because at the end, it's the it's the aim of our company. So uh, thank you very much for being here. Thanks, Katerina. So we'll wrap up and um, I hope everyone enjoys the rest of the day and uh, we'll be in touch by email and uh, please look out for the, the next webinar that we'll schedule over the next month or so. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye for now.